Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Monday, the start of another week, the day after Arsenal's 1-1 draw at Southampton. The winning run has come to an end. Definitely a case of two points dropped for Arsenal yesterday, no doubt about it. Very, very disappointing second half after getting themselves in a good position. Game should have been done and dusted by half-time. Let's, uh, let's put it right, there was some Plenty of chances there for Arsenal to kill the game off. They didn't, and then they struggled in the second half, just as they did against Leeds the week earlier. They got away with it at Leeds. They didn't get away with it yesterday. Really good goal by Southampton to get themselves an equaliser. Wasn't overly surprised when they scored it. I have to say, the one thing I was surprised at, that it wasn't from a set piece or a long throw. I really felt like that's where Southampton were going to score. I didn't think they were causing Arsenal too many problems um, in a sort of open play type scenario but it was a very good goal really nice dummy from Aribo to open up the space and Southampton took full advantage of it and I think they probably just about deserved that equaliser on how things went yesterday I did talk about it at length in my post-match game if you haven't watched the uh, post-match video sorry if you haven't watched it yet it's there from yesterday where I talked about my player ratings and gave my match match um, kind of match report on it all and now sort of looking at it a day later it just still feels like that it was it was a disappointing day for Arsenal, but having said that, it wasn't a loss. That was Arsenal's first draw in 27 games. That is pretty remarkable. Only the second time this season they haven't taken maximum points in the Premier League, so I don't think we can be too disappointed with how things are going. But having said that as well, it was definitely a case of two points dropped. Arsenal should be sitting here today on the back of another win, but they are not. And is fatigue the big issue here like I said second half at Ellen Road last last weekend Arsenal absolutely hanging on ran out of steam second half yesterday not exactly hanging on like they were at Ellen Road but still ran out of steam so it is fatigue an issue some interesting stats here from Arsenal in terms of first half and second half over their last two games um, first half Arsenal's XG in the two games is just over one. Second half, it's 0.48. First half, 15 shots in the last two games. Second half, just six. Seven shots on target in the first half over the last two games. None on target in the last two. Everything sort of goes in that way. 23, six 26 touches in the opposition box in the last in the first half of the last two games. That goes down to 13. 103 successful passes goes down to 70 in the second half. XG against 0.72 in the first half of the last two games goes up to 1.81 in the uh, second half. So all of those stats, they, you know, it shows a, they all follow a very distinct trend. The Arsenal first half, good. Second half, struggling. And you kind of look at that and think it has to surely be, a, or a large part of it, down to fatigue. Yes, the other team have played well. Leeds were very, very good in the second half at Ellen Road. Um a week ago Southampton were certainly better in the second half yesterday they weren't great by any means but they were certainly better than they were in the in the first half um so that has to be taken into account as tool as well but I just think the way Arsenal have struggled to sort of replicate their attacking form in the second half just shows they are struggling a little bit fatigue wise and just being able to sustain that tempo that high tempo that they play with that they press with which in the first half creates plenty of chances for them in the um in the opposition in and around the opposition penalty area because they're winning the ball back quickly turning the ball over and getting at the opposition they're just not doing that as much in the second half recently and i think you have to say that that is down to tiredness i mean eight players this season have started every single premier league game for arsenal eight yeah, that's a lot and um, when you factor in, quite a few of those are, have also played plenty of games in the Europa League as well, like Granit Xhaka, Gabriel, uh, Bukayo Saka. Tiredness has to come into it uh, at some point. Um, Mikel was speaking about it in his press conference yesterday, and um, he said, look, when, we, when he was asked about the fact that eight players have started every Premier League game, he said that means they haven't played other games. Not technically true, as I said, because Granit's played a fair few of the Europa League games, so's Gabriel, so's Bukayo so I think at the start the team looked really fresh against Southampton as for the second half of the last few minutes the way we played I put it there we should have played better in the second half um, so he's kind of fudging over a, li a little bit I think there's no doubt about it that tiredness has to come into the equation here and it's not just Arsenal it's with every team at the moment there's so many games that fixtures are so hectic that it's good that teams are going to struggle and when you're Arsenal and you don't have the strongest squad you're not a Man City for example it's going to have an effect and there's certainly a couple of really key areas in that pitch I think where Arsenal can't really make too many changes 
and um, and that is going to become an issue as the season goes on. I mean, they've not got too many games now until the January transfer window because they've only got a few games left before the World Cup, and then you know the first Premier League game after that is December the twenty sixth, and then your only you know transfer window opens a few days after that. So there is a possibility of improving this squad for the second half of the season. I think Arsenal are going to have to take it if they want to maintain this really impressive start. They need a couple more bodies in the in the squad they need to give Mikel a, a couple more uh, options before all the FA Cup games the, and the Europa League knockout stages start if they want to maintain this position they've put themselves in such a fantastic position with this brilliant start to the season they've enjoyed that you'll want to take advantage January's never easy obviously it's never easy I think this January is going to be a little bit different though because it doesn't have to be quite so rushed because once the World Cup breaks all the teams all the technical directors they're going to have an awful lot of time doing nothing in terms of not having to worry too much about football because the players are going to be away and the, other, the rest of the team are going to be on training camps. Arsenal are going to, going to be in Dubai, for example. And the, you're just going to, it's just going to be different. I think the January window, it's going to be almost more like a summer window, probably not in terms of the level of money that's spent because it is still mid-season and everyone invested heavily in the summer. But it's going to be, in terms of preparation time and planning and being able to sit down and really focus on talks with other clubs that sort of thing it's going to be more like the summer than it normally is because of this big extended break we're going to have at the world cup and i think arsenal have to take advantage of that um and potentially look to improve their squad they need to get some support for a couple of really key players in that squad and um if they don't then i just think what we're maybe seeing in the last couple of weeks or so is going to creep in more and more because the second half of the season is going to be absolutely brutal no doubt about it um Sort of going on from that, Mikel, so a couple more comments he made yesterday. He said, look, we have the same squad that we had a month ago, two days ago, and the same as we're going to have at home next week. I don't like to have any excuses. In the second half, we could have played much better and we could have won more comfortably uh, than we did, and that is completely down to us. I think the team looked really fresh at the start. I put it more down to the way we played, uh, and we should have played better in the second half. So he's there saying, look, it's more to do with the way we played rather than fitness, but not sure. I, I think tiredness has to come into the equation a little bit and I think the stats certainly back that up I think the performances certainly back that up and you know Arsenal just about got away with it at Leeds they didn't yesterday and the Premier League's so tough it doesn't matter who you're playing yes it's only Southampton uh, people might say but you know Southampton is still a Premier League side they're still packed full of internationals they're going to win games in the Premier League and if you're not on it then you're going to come up a little bit short and I think Arsenal in the second half just came up a little bit short yesterday they missed the chances when they should have put away um, which would have killed things off and then having done that you're just always open to a quick little counter-attack or a set piece. And yesterday it was the counter-attack that did that. It's only the, the only other away game in the Premier League Arsenal conceded this season other than that Man United game. Uh, yeah, which um, is impressive in a way, but still disappointing that they did let that goal in. I mean, look, Gabriel Jesus could have put the game to bed yesterday. He had chances. I think he maybe is beginning to look tired. No surprise, because he's been an absolute energizer bunny since he arrived through the door. Has not stopped working, has not stopped running. But I'd just look at sort of him yesterday and what he's like and being in front of goal the last couple of games, maybe snatching at chances a little bit. And again, I just think possibly, I mean, confidence will be certainly a part of that. But I just wonder if sort of fatigue, physical and mental might be coming into it again. The moment in the second half when Odegaard played him through, I think that happens at the start of the season. He races away, he doesn't muck up that touch and he scores. But yesterday, I think he was just struggling a little bit. Confidence, as I said, was probably a little bit down. I just think mentally as well, fatigue might have been creeping in and that's probably why he just didn't quite get the ball out of his feet like he would have wanted. Could have maybe taken it onto his right side, got across the defender. That's what you're sort of thinking about in real time. And I think when you're mentally on it, you think about that. But when you're not, you maybe your touch gets away from you. Suddenly you've got to go onto your left foot and the chance has gone. And I think that's what happened yesterday. And, you know, Jesus has not scored for five games, which is, you know, disappointing. You want him to score more. You have to, so a couple of those games have been substitute appearances. So it's been three Premier League games that he hasn't scored since the it was the Tottenham game, wasn't it? it? Was his last goal for Arsenal? And um, you know, Arsenal need Jesus to be scoring. There's no doubt about it. I'm not overly worried about Jesus's form by any means. I still think he's performing. He's still getting into the areas to score. He could have easily scored three or four goals in the last few games. It's just the fact that I think maybe he, like other players, are just feeling the effects of this really quick, hectic start to the season. And that might be affecting him and having a little bit of an impact on him. He spoke about it um, yesterday after the game. He was asked, you know, why why haven't you scored? What's going on these last five games? Can you put a finger, put a sort of finger on why things have 
sort of dried up for you a little bit in front of the goal and he said I don't know I really don't if I could if I knew I would tell you the only thing I can do is keep trying keep fighting keep improving like I said I'm here to score goals I'm here to help the team with goals I understand that of course the goals are going to come back soon and I agree with him I'm sure the goals are going to come back soon I can't I'm not worried about Gabriel Jesus whatsoever it's not ideal that he's gone five games without a goal because Arsenal need him to score but having said that He's still in and around it. He's still creating chances for others. He's still getting in areas. I'd be far more worried if he wasn't getting into areas where he could score. Like, you go back to last season with Lacazette or someone like that, when he just never looked like he was going to score. You'd never think he would score, but it's completely the opposite with Jesus. You know that a goal's just around the corner with him because he keeps getting into the areas and he keeps he keeps getting the chances. And, and so the goals will come. He could have easily walked away with a hat-trick yesterday. Um he he also gave a bit of an insight into what it was like in the changing room after the game yesterday. Um, speaking afterwards to the media, he said that we created a lot, but we are not we weren't finishing good. I put me into that, of course, because I had some chances. I could have scored one or two, and then we win the game. That's what I said after those. Sometimes in football is like that. We create this, we play good, but you don't score, you don't win games. It's hard, it's difficult, it hurts, but we have to realise and wake up and improve and come back soon. He said that everyone was upset in the changing room afterwards, and I like that. I like the fact that they were upset because you know it's still a draw they didn't lose but it almost felt like a defeat and maybe that is a indicator of just how far Arsenal have come now is that you're disappointed by a draw rather than before you'd probably be feeling like this after a defeat but now you're feeling like this after a draw that's the sort of standards they've set and that I think is an indicator of how far Arsenal have come and there's been lots of talk afterwards about Tierney and Tommy Asu. I spoke about it yesterday a little bit on my video. I wrote a piece about it after the game yesterday, my sort of winners and losers piece as well. And I do wonder, for me, I think Mikel, I think Mikel got it wrong, I think, with Tommy Asu. I think he, it, against Liverpool, it was a masterstroke, tactical, it worked. He took Salah out of the game. But I just think, especially games against maybe teams like Southampton, where you're going to, Arsenal are going to be really on the front foot, you would expect more. I just wonder if Tierney, is the better option at left back if Sinchenko's not around. I get that Tommy Asu probably does the Sinchenko role better than Tierney does in terms of he sort of comes into the central areas a little bit more and makes sort of adds to that midfield almost and Tierney gives you something different and he'll be the guy bombing down the touchline and get into the touchline and whipping balls in as he did when he came on against Southampton yesterday. So I can kind of understand um, Tommy Asu doing that because it is more like Zinchenko, but I don't think you really have to, if Zinchenko's out, you have to just replicate him or try and replicate him. I think you can get play to your other strength. And I think certainly against Southampton yesterday, Arsenal would have benefited far more from having Tierney as a real sort of attacking outlet down that left-hand side and getting on beyond um, Martinelli perhaps. And sort of, I just think he would have stretched um, Southampton a little bit more as I said he did it when he came on in the second half he almost created the winner with that cross that he got in down the uh, down the byline uh, and crossed it for Odegaard who scored but obviously the ball had just gone out of play before Tierney got got the cross in and I think that was an indicator of exactly what he could have done a little bit more if he'd been in the starting 11 and so yeah I, we're not sure yet when Zinchenko is going to come back Arsenal go to PSV on Thursday I don't think he's going to be involved in that one I can't imagine he would be I'm not sure if he's back training yet this week or not um, but if he's not and Arsenal and it's still sort of the squad is as it is for the Nottingham Forest game next weekend I'd be very much inclined if I was Mikel Arteta <laughs> to play Tierney in that one because that's a game that Arsenal are obviously going to have a lot of the ball in they're going to look to attack and I just think Tierney would just fits the bill a little bit. He'll just offer Arsenal a little bit more down that left-hand side than Tommy Asu would, certainly as an attacking threat. And I just don't really think you really need Tommy Asu drifting inside in that game um, to sort of create the extra man in midfield. Just I'm just not sure you really need that inverted fullback against Nottingham Forest. You can you can easily play with the classic fullback that Tierney is in that game. And I just think, yeah, I, w I wonder if that's what, what we'll do. We'll, I guess we'll find out against PSV on Thursday night. Whoever starts at left-back in that game will be... Um, will be the person on the bench for the match against uh, Forest, you would think. So it'll be interesting to look at that one. And I think that team, I think the team's going to be quite strong against PSV. I have to say, I know a lot of people were saying, look, rest everyone against PSV because they look tired. But I just think it's Mikel Arteta. I just think he will go quite strong again. I think if he's going to rest anyone or rest, really sort of rest, make wholesale changes, it will be for the Zurich game. He'll want to get, make sure that Arsenal have won the group before that last game against Zurich. Because you think that game against Zurich is on the Thursday night and then go to Chelsea away on the Sunday at 12pm. So you look at that and think he probably doesn't want anyone playing in that Zurich game. He'll want to play, he'll want to give everyone who's starting against Chelsea the rest on that Thursday night. 
And I'm not sure he can do that if Arsenal haven't guaranteed themselves winning the group by that stage. So he'll want to go to PSV on Thursday night and get the result that they need to guarantee themselves and to allow Arteta to make wholesale changes against Zurich. So I think he'll still go pretty strong on Thursday night. Um, uh, so yeah, if you're expecting everyone to be left at home, I think you might be a little bit disappointed, but we shall wait and see the team fly out on Wednesday afternoon for that. There is one final training session on Wednesday uh, morning, which the media will be at uh, before they fly out for that one. All right, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Anything you've agreed with, disagreed with, anything you want to say, let me know, as always, in the comments below. Until next time, everyone, have a very good day. I'll speak to you soon.